beautiful spirit of worship in this place. Amen. Isn't, isn't that true, though? When all the other names fade away. When Dow Jones fades away. When Merrill Lynch fades away. When Atrium Health doesn't have the answer to your situation and it fades away. Doesn't Jesus take his place? It, when, when, when people go crazy and, and are consumed with fear and you don't know which way to turn. Isn't this the season in which we've been taught to turn? We, we focus our eyes on the hill from which comes our help. Isn't that what the 121 Psalm says? We, when all the other stuff, the distractions and all that stuff fades away. They don't know what to do with the kids in school and that fades away. And, and even government begins to fade away. We don't know whether we're coming or we're going and everything starts to fade away. Jesus takes his place. There's one thing that's not going to leave us and not going to forsake us. It doesn't matter what the virus looks like. It doesn't matter what society looks like. It doesn't matter what we're going through. There's one name that does not fade away. NASDAQ is fading away. You better have had your stock inside of the name of Jesus and not the name of any of these man-made vehicles that were supposed to take you to where. Listen, you better get your, yourself on the Jesus cart. Because these things tend to fade away. Yes. Jobs tend to fade away in situations like this. It's time for you to connect like never before. It's time for you to turn your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. What does your help come from? Your help comes from the Lord, period. Yes. And as these things start to fade away, I'm telling you now, because they are going to fade, they're fading now. Yes. Now is the time for the Christians to stand up. Now is the time for, for us to stand up with a message of hope. Now is the time for us to begin to help people to understand all these other things that you've had. That's what, that's what the Christians come in at during this time. We're supposed to stand in and we're supposed to let them know about one name. Not going to fade away. It doesn't matter what happens on this earth. He says, listen, I am closest to you in when? The time of trouble. I don't care. You may see earthquakes and, and all different types of things. Psalm 46 says, during the time of trouble. That's one name that's not going to fade away. Matter of fact, that name is going to become bigger. That name is going to become greater. That name is going to become closer to you than ever before. He says, he doesn't even say that you run to that name when, when everything's going on, when they're in a the time of trouble. He says, no, 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 this is what happens during the time of trouble. I come to you. When everything else starts to fade away, starts to go away, that's the time when Jesus says, I'm coming in. I'm, I want to take my place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Welcome to Uplift. God bless you. Uh, those of you who were able to come, healthy people in the house, uh, we're, we're so appreciative uh, of you understanding what's going on. Do not take for granted that you're here today. Uh, I want to encourage you just as we encouraged you a few days ago in our um, video uh, that if you at any point do not feel well, we, 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 we want you operating in wisdom. We want you operating in sound judgment. If at any point, this is not about trying to prove anything. People's lives are at stake. And so we want you to just be here because you know that God wants you here and you know that you are healthy enough to be here. And so we're going to continue to have service as long as the government allows us to have service. At some point, I just want to be honest with you, be candid with you. Uh, you know, Jesus says, pay Caesar, he is. At, at some point, if the conditions change and the ban goes down to a number that is not uh, feasible for us to have service, then we will have other options. Matter of fact, we, we've got another option going on now. Actually, I'm going to say hello to our uh, members and guests who are joining. Many churches in the area are shut down. Uh, a lot of them are shut down because they are bigger than the ban. The ban says that any group that's going to gather that is above 250 people that, that they that they should not get it's guidance it's guidelines but 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 it's being positioned as a ban and i think most people are taking it from a ban perspective they're saying that if your crowd is going to be more than 250 people 
that they're suggesting that you not gather. And so all throughout uh, Charlotte today and throughout this, this, this nation, we're seeing something that we've never seen before. We've been through all kind of stuff in this nation. Uh, and after every type, every, every bad thing that has ever happened, you've seen people rush into the church. This is, a, this is uncharted territory. After 9-11, people rushed into the church. Churches were full for years. I mean, it just started now to go back on a decline after the tragedy of 9-11. But, but, but listen to me. This is a peculiar, a peculiar type of situation that the church finds itself in. Uh, because we are being told that if we are going to be a group larger than 250, that we, we, we shouldn't gather. We should just go online. But, but listen, where two or three are gathered, yes. it's, it's never been about the amount of people. It's always been about the power that exists in the people. Uh, but I want us praying uh, across all churches because listen to me, this is a very, we're, we're not like the other businesses. We're not going to get a bailout like the cruise industry. We're not, we won't get a bailout like any uh, other areas that are identified as impacted by this. You, you've got people who just moved into a new church all throughout this nation. They, they can't handle the bank's not going to say, hey, we understand that you couldn't assemble. They, they can't handle this. You've got small churches like ours. This is tough for us, guys. That's why we're encouraging you to give like you've never given before and at least give at the level that you've, give, that you've been giving. We're actually during this time that we tend to give a little bit more because we know that some people during this time, they, they may not be able to give. Maybe they're working a job in which that job has now been put on hiatus because of um, th this change, this virus. And so we're asking those who can give. Don't, don't be fearful. We're asking those who can give, to give. And if you can, give a little bit more during this time. Let's, let's not only make it through this time, but let's strive. Let's look back on this time period and see that we grew in, in our giving, that we grew during this time. So, so, so we want to be prayerful for all churches across the nation because listen to me, guys. I'm telling you, this type of change has the ability to put a lot of churches out of business. There are a lot of churches who are operating on budgets that require every week people to come in, put money into this bucket. There's no alternate plan for churches other than tithes and offerings. And when assembly doesn't happen, it impacts the biggest churches, the medium-sized churches, and the smallest churches, and it impacts it greatly. So I want us praying for uplift. I want us praying for all churches, praying for all communities. I want us praying for our, for our families because we know that some of our families are being impacted. And I'm not talking about just stock stuff. I'm talking about there, there, there's impact that's happening across a number of different industries right now. And so we want to keep everybody in prayer, keep everybody lifted up. Amen? Amen. But it's good to see you. Good to see our people online. We, uh, we absolutely appreciate you uh, guys worshiping with us online. And, and definitely uh, you had you know, tens of thousands of options to join. You, you're joining with us, and, and we do not take that for granted. Uh, we made a couple of announcements, and I hope you've seen some of those things uh, throughout the course of the week. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I want to reiterate that although we're gathering, let, let us be wise. Let us have sound judgment in our gathering. And I know this is hard for Uplift because we're a church that likes to hug. We're a church that likes to spend a lot of time in intimate, close uh, quarters And so what I want us to do is I want us to really take heed to what the CDC has advised us to do. And that is, you know, I know sometimes even after service, I'm thinking, man, I preached too long. Man, that was long. And, and you know what I realized? You guys are in no hurry to get out of here. Sometimes after services, we're here just hanging out, just loving on each other. Sometimes an hour, hour, 30 minutes after the service is over with, we're still, there's never been a rush to get out of here. I'm not asking you to rush to get out of here. But I am asking that we have some caution. <laughs> And we wave, and we make our ways to the way to the door. And you know, during this week, uh, you know, if you if you see some trash or anything, grab it. You know, put it in the in, in the trash can on the way out. But but we do not need you hanging around trying to do a lot of stuff that you normally would do to help us out. We'll, we'll get in here later this week. We'll get it disinfected, sanitized, um, and and have everything together. So as for today, you know, I want you to I want you to go ahead on and kind of exit out.
<laughs> Make your way to your car. We, you know, we don't want you in somebody's window talking to them. And they, no, no, no. Make your way to your car. Better times are coming. Better opportunities are coming for fellowship. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand with me? I uh, want to do uh, um, uh, three things. Three things that we always do. Um, we want to read some scripture together. We want to do our confirmation, uh, and we want to I want to pray. So before I do that, let me just say this real quick. Thank you to all those people who were here. I'm amazed by how service goes when I'm out. I'm so pleased. Uh, you know, I, I went to Auburn University. I think most of you guys know that. One of the things that we have been famous for is that we keep a stable. That's what they say. A stable of running backs. We keep a stable. That's how you become national champions. That's how you become a great program. We keep a stable of running backs. We keep a stable of inside linebackers. That's what they say. Everybody, everybody agrees on this. Um, <laughs> That Auburn has traditionally been running back university. That's where our national championships have come from. And, and it's an awesome thing. I, I feel that way about Uplift. <laughs> I feel that way about Uplift. This is going somewhere. It, it's next man up. It, it's next man up. We have a stable of preachers. We have a stable of ministers who, who come forward every time. If, if I'm out, so the next person in, I mean, and they take over the game and they wreck shop. And, and, and Minister Lyons did exactly that last. We, matter of fact, matter of fact, he did a wonderful job. And, and matter of fact, I had to put my chair back together because Minister Lyons was up here. He was, I saw him up here. He was, he was having a good time in his chair. Uh, and and somewhere or another, he kind of broke my chair up here, Minister Lyons. You, you that, the spirit was all inside of that. And I saw you. I saw you. And one of those days, we were watching online, and he actually hit his, uh, hit the hit the receiver and cut off his sound. Didn't he? But that is how you're supposed to preach. Amen. With enthusiasm. Yeah. His the word was great. Yeah. Uh, people, people's lives would change and we are thankful Minister Lyons he's, he's actually doing a favor for me today he's manning the online uh, uh, live stream uh, for me today so he wanted to be here but he's manning the live stream for me in the next couple of weeks we just want to have somebody on live stream in case anybody wants to pray needs a prayer matter of fact those people who are joining us via the live stream feel free to if you would like a prayer if you need a prayer if you need anything from us at this time feel free to just drop that information inside of the chat within the live stream. Minister Lyons is there. He is manning that. He is available to call you directly afterwards. Feel free to just put you, whatever it is that you need to do. Just feel free. Also, you can go to our app. Our app, you can do prayer requests. Our app, you can give. You can do all the things that you would do in this church inside of our app. And so at the same token, if you don't feel comfortable putting a request in or reaching out to Minister Lyons via the chat in the live stream, just go to the app and we'll see it. And we'll reach out to you and we'll pray for you and whatever that request, whatever that need is that you have, we'll make sure that that need is, is fulfilled. Amen. So, so what do we believe? I want, I want, listen to this. Oh, but before you get started, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, yeah, I was out a week, so I got to get back in the, in the floor thing. So uh, it, it sounded to me like uh, this weekend, there was a lot of power inside of this place. Both services, when you guys did the confirmation, I couldn't make out on, 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 the, uh, on the live stream which one was more powerful. But what I could make out was that both of them were very powerful. And so what I want to do, listen, this, this is what I want to do. I want you guys to be at your most powerful, loudest. I want you guys to say this like, like you've never said it before. I want to shake hell today. I want to let them, I want to let the hell, I want to let the devil know that we're not in any way worried about any kind of virus or anything that's going on, but that we're up here, we're celebrating, we're rejoicing, we're believing that God's going to move. And, and so what do we believe? Give yourselves a hand. Wow. 
that might be the loudest I've heard all year long. Now, now, now let, me, let me tell you something. I heard ab ab above all the, the voices. I think I heard Kenneth and, and I think I heard the white kids' voices over all the, and I think Dominique, I think I heard your kids, I, I heard their voices over, over the last name White. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that now. <laughs> Are you speaking prophetically that they're coming? Is that what? Okay, 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 we receive that. We receive that. But, but it's, it, it's amazing, guys, from the stage to hear our children. I don't know if you guys can hear their voices yeah. in the midst of it, to hear our children's voices as loud and projecting just like our adults. And, and surely they know it by heart, because I don't think Kenneth can see past that, see past the people in front of him over there. Can you, Kenneth? I, I think Kenneth knows this by heart. Good job, man. Good job, good job. Uh, let, let, let's pray. Father God, we come to you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We come believing first and foremost that when all the other names fade away, yeah. that you will take your place in our life. That in this particular time, we do not have to fear. There's nothing for us to, to be fearful of because you are God who has promised that you are light, salvation, and strength. And so, God, this is our prayer. God, we're just praying today that you give us the ability to see fear. See if we're operating in any fear. See if we're making decisions in fear, God. See if there's any doubt going on inside of us right now. See if there's anything that's causing us to operate in, in fear, God. Because we know your word says you've not given us a spirit of fear. Yes. But what you've given us is power, love, and, and sound judgment. And so, God, we're praying right now that you, that you God, remove anything yes. that looks like fear on the inside of us. God, sometimes we cannot see the fear that is operating on the inside of us. And so, God, we're praying today that you begin to open our eyes. That is what this year, give us 2020 vision in the spirit and allow us to see any areas of our life where we're operating in fear and then God give us the power, the love and the sound judgment to be able to break away from fear and to walk in faith. And we pray this now in the name of your son, Yeshua the Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I want to read some scripture with you uh, today and, and I'm going to jump from verses 1 and 2 and then I'm going to jump down so that there's a middle part. Just give you a little bit of context. Mark 4, very powerful, powerful chapter of the Bible. I'm going to encourage all of you today, this week. You'll have time this week. Many of you won't be going to work or be working from home. I'm giving you something to do, giving you homework. Mark 4, a very powerful, powerful chapter in the Bible. This is the chapter where Jesus is out and he's, he's giving his speech. He's, he has his sea behind him. He's giving his speech to this amphitheater. And he goes, all right, we were in Hawaii um, in around, around Thanksgiving time. And we had the, the, the ocean behind us. And I was talk, talking to Angelo. And I realized as we were talking, we were actually talking to Nana. actually talking, Angelo and I were actually talking to Nana. And what I realized is, there was something about the body of water behind me that caused my voice to project, literally project, and come back to me. And it made so much sense. This, this whole scene made so much sense to me how Jesus was able to sit and talk to all these people, probably a thousand people, not more, and, and give them this, these parables that he's getting ready to give them. And so as we talked, Angelo, we experienced it together. As we spoke toward the building, the rock, that we, this would have been like a mountain uh, setting, uh, the, the reflection that coming back off of the sea, I, I, I can't explain it, I can't explain it, uh, it actually made like a PA system, like an echo, and you could hear it, it was amazing. And, and, and so this is what Jesus is doing. He is literally on a boat uh, because people can't see him and he, he wants to be seen, wants to be far enough away from the crowd to where they can see him because he's telling parables and my guess is he's preaching Jesus like Jesus. He's, that's what we do every week. I try to preach Jesus like Jesus. So he's using all kind of illustrations. He's trying to take it. He's, make, he's trying to make sure that people can understand. The people who are intended to understand can understand because also in Mark 4 we begin to see that some of the reason why he taught in parables was because he didn't want the people who should not receive a word to understand it. That's one of the things I want you to work on this week. 
reading through the parables. Understand, he goes through these four parables. But, but what I want to do is I want to look at the bookends of, of this. And so he starts in, in chapter 1, I mean in Mark 4, in verse 1, he says, And again he began to teach, what I just said, by the sea. He's teaching by the sea. you got to understand this. The backdrop of Jesus, got to get this now, is the sea. He's literally on a boat. He, the boat is just out a little bit, maybe, let's just say maybe 15 feet tied to the shore. He's standing on a boat, and he's preaching by the sea. And look what he's doing. And a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into a boat and he sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. So just like I told you, man, Angelo, we were, we were down right there by the water, the ocean. We're talking up. And as we talk up, we can hear, I have no idea why, we can hear like a PA system, our voice is coming back to us. So Jesus is talking to this multitude of people by the sea. Then he taught them, he taught them many things by parable. He taught them four parables. You got to get this. And all four parables that he taught him, which you'll be researching this week, were all about faith. He's talking about faith. He's, he's giving different parables. He's talking about seeds being sold. He's talking about mustard seeds. He's talking about all these different faith parables. He's teaching the crowd about faith. Behind him is the sea. All the people are in front of him. Then we get all, all the way to the end of this chapter. Look what it says. On the same day, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let, let, let us cross over to the other side. Let us, the sea is behind me. Let us get in the boat and let us go across to the other side. Now, now when they had left the multitude, this is just the disciples, this is just those people would have been close to him, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm, uh, uh, this huge storm, this, this huge storm came about them. Now, now what you got, got, I'm trying to keep it in context for you. They've been hanging out with Jesus and Jesus has been teaching them about faith on the very sea with the sea behind them this entire time. He's been teaching them about faith. They've been looking at Jesus, learning about faith. They've been looking out past him at the same sea. They get into a boat on the same sea on the same day that they've been being taught about faith, that they've been being showed these four parables about faith the same day not the next day not a week later on the same day they get inside of a boat the boat with Jesus Jesus is on the boat with them and this great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat they, they, they start seeing these waves beat into the boat they start to see this wind they start to see all these different things that are happening so that it was already filling they start to see water literally coming onto the boat I want you to see this now they, they're, they're on this boat Jesus is on the boat he says but he was in the stern of sleep on a pillow. So Jesus is there, but he's down in the bottom sleep. And look what they did. They said, and they awoke him, and they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Do you not see that we're getting ready to die? Do you not care? Can you not see that you got us on this boat? You taught us all this stuff. You were the one who said, we've got to go in this direction. And now that we're on the boat, now we, we're getting ready to sink. He says, then he arose, this is Jesus, and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, peace, he says, peace, be still, and look what happened, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, and somebody needs to understand this, mm -hmm. Corona has the headline for the day, but there is a peace coming, Amen. and there is a great calm coming. Amen. And there may be challenges today, but I want you to understand this. Spirit of the Lord is going to bring peace and calm to this situation, and there's going to be much growth. That's why Paul says we rejoice in tribulation because we know that we're going to be stronger when we come out of this. I want somebody to hear me right now. We're going we're gonna to get to this place of character. We're going to get to this place of hope. That is what God is getting ready to do. He's getting ready to bring in peace, and he's getting ready to say, be still. And, and the wind cease. And there was a great calm. But, but he said, this is Jesus, capital H, to them. Why, why, why are you so fearful? I, I've been teaching you all day long 
about faith. I've been, I've been showing you. It just takes a little bit of faith. I've been spending all this time with you. I, I'm the one who got on the boat with you. I'm on the boat with you. Why are you allow, allowing what your eyes see to make you fearful? He says, how is it? That you have no faith. I, I spent all day long teaching you about faith, he says, and, 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 they, and they feared exceedingly. And they said to one another, who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey them. I, I want to talk to you today from this topic. I, I want to talk to you from the topic of, of seeing fear. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> You know, we were going in a, a, a totally different direction when I left here. We're getting ready to talk about comparison today. Uh, but, but something happened when I walked back into the airport on my way back off of vacation. You know, I was on vacation. Everything was wonderful. Everything was peaceful. I'm talking about peace like you've never seen before. All-inclusive kind of peace. Maybe, maybe the food isn't exactly like Grandmama cooked it, but it's still there. Every time you go, it's already waiting on you to get there. It's that kind of peace. You know, they, they've got everything planned out for you. You're able to go and get all type of entertainment. It's just a peaceful place that I was in. And when we, when we came back into the Orlando airport, I began to know quickly, actually, as we drove around Orlando, as we, as we drove around Orlando with radio on, I began to notice that there was no peace in these United States. That everything that was being talked about was, was, was about fear. And everything that was being discussed, every, every channel that we turned to, it didn't matter what station you were listening to. It wasn't just NPR. It was hip-hop station, gospel station. Regardless of what station you turned to, regardless of what channel you turned to, I don't care what news you turned to, there was this constant constant message of fear and I could feel it as I walked through the airport this was not the same airport that we came in through we came in the airport and things were as the airport is orderly and, and everything was fine and you saw a couple of people who who had a mask on here or there but but everything was so much more orderly on my way back everything changed Mask way everywhere. I mean, people just moving around. People trying to change flights. I mean, it's like ants. Everything just trying to move around. Everybody's trying to get to another place, trying not to be where they're going. People trying to change different uh, flights and, and trying to get different things done. And you could just see, you could feel it. I mean, it was so thick. The fear was so thick that, that you could cut it with a knife. And, and, and it just blew my mind that we had come to this place where fear had completely taken over. But, but as I began to, to, to look around and listen to things, that was one thing that really began to show me how fearful we were. That, 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 that was this person that came on to the news broadcast and he informed us that toilet paper at all stores was out. Matter of fact, he said that you can't even get toilet paper on Amazon. Amazon was out of toilet paper, is out of toilet paper potentially today. This is now the image of the coronavirus that we will talk about. People will research this. People will look at this for years to come. How in the world did we run out of toilet paper? <laughs> People got scared. People began to operate in fear. And why would they run into all the stores? Listen, they say, you couldn't go into a store yesterday. You couldn't order toilet paper. You got to listen to me, guys. You couldn't order toilet paper yesterday because there was no toilet paper on Amazon. There's no toilet paper inside of the stores. There was no toilet paper. People stocked up on toilet paper. They say some people brought enough toilet paper to last them for a year. Why would why would people run and get toilet paper? I mean, if you begin to think about it, it makes absolutely no sense. Nothing about this virus says that you're going to be sitting on the toilet and that you're going to need a whole lot of toilet paper. If you think about it, nothing about this makes sense. And, and as God began to prompt me and he began to speak to me, and I, and I believe he began to speak to me even prophetically and began to open my eyes up and begin to give me some rhema, he led me to this place. You know, we're in a series and we're trying to get to this place of 2020 vision. And what God began to show me that there's this reaction that happens. It's called a freezing behavior. 
the freezing behavior is put in place so that you can see something and not get hurt. It is not put in place so that you can see something and go into fear. And let me, let me just tell you how it works. Let me give you a good example of how, it's, how it works. What freezing behavior does is you're walking through the woods and you look ahead and you see something that looks like a, a, a snake on the ground. You can't make out what it is. And what happens is your brain begins to automatically take uh, uh, blood and oxygen away from the eyes and it begins to send it to the to the legs and it's getting ready for you to run because in your mind you begin to think that that, hey, that could be a snake and in some people some people literally actually begin to run at that point but most people what happens is they take the time they pause they look at it because during this particular time your eyes lose focus your the whites of your eyes you've seen people with scared eyes the whites of your eyes get big so you can see more you can take in more information but the actual focus of what you're trying to do it actually goes away and what happens in your mind this is how the physical leads to the psychological and and what we say leads to the, the mental and the spiritual what really happens in your in your mind and inside of your spirit your mind and your spirit your eyes begin to communicate to your mind and your spirit that I think that's a snake and what your body begins to do in, in, in people who, who react in this way out of fear, what, what your body begins to do is it begins to back up and run away from the, the situation. And this happens all the time. That's what happens in a lot of the cases where we see when we hear police officers who, this happens in our community a lot, we hear about police officers who shoot somebody who at a cell phone. But, but the reality what happens, you've got some bad cops. I'm not, I'm not up here to argue for cops. That's not, that's not what I'm here up here to do. You have some bad policemen. But what happens in a number of cases is that this whole freezing behavior takes place. The eyes get wide. The focus goes away. And what the person literally believes they see is a gun inside his hand. They don't see a cell phone. They see a black object and your mind begins to recall things from his past. When it doesn't matter how, how trained you are. It doesn't matter what you understand in the moment. At that very moment, your, your, your adrenaline takes over. Your eyes, your pupils, they dilate. You're not able to focus on the object and your brain goes back and it grabs something from the past an image of a gun it, it grabs something for the past and what the spirit of the Lord was beginning to show me is the reason why we are buying toilet tissue is because the last time we had one of these pandemic one of these epidemic kind of things that was going was Ebola and Ebola required you to have toilet paper because Ebola impacted your stomach and it caused diarrhea. And so we are reacting out of fear and not even realizing it. We're telling ourselves that we're doing a prudent thing, that we should go and buy a year worth of toilet tissue for a virus that's not going to even impact your stomach. And not many of us not even realize it. Many of us are saying, I'm not fearful. I don't care anything about fear. I'm just going to the store because I believe I need a year worth of toilet tissue just in case. And if we're not careful, listen, I want you to understand this. What the Spirit of the Lord began to say to me is, the people who brought all the toilet tissue, they were Christians. We're in a Christian nation. There's like 90% of us in this nation who declares to be followers of Jesus, who declares to be believers in Christ, who declares to be, you know, these Bible following. I'm talking about people in there that were holy, ghost baptized, was buying toilet tissue. We're operating in fear. And for many of us, we don't even realize that we're operating in fear. For many of us, we're just allowing for what we saw with our eyes to determine how we're going to react. And it's impacting, listen, it's more than just buying toilet tissue. It's impacting the way we treat each other. It's impacting the amount of sleep we get at night. It's impacting how we see the future. We're allowing for what we see with our eyes to determine everything that's going on about us. We're making decisions. People are trading off stock. That's what's happening with the Dow Jones. There is nothing particular about this virus that should be causing for our stocks to go down. But you know what's happening? People are walking through the woods and they see a snake and they, they see what they believe is a snake and, and they even for some of these people as I read and did the research they even see the stick moving that, that's how powerful this fear is they see a stick and they I mean I'm, I'm sure that was a snake I'm sure it moved I mean and then they literally get close to it and they realize this, this is just a stick yeah. 
and that's what's happening. And it's impacting every area of our nation. People are beginning to make knee-jerk decisions. But, you know, this is what, this is what, what, what the fear is coming in. Because as people begin to make knee-jerk decisions, and these decisions impact the livelihoods of people, dedicated people, people who are operating outside of fear are going to be impacted by, by this fear. And, and, and listen, this is what I want to do. I'm just trying to get across one thing. And, and that is, we cannot operate in fear. Right. It's okay for us to pause. That is what the response is for. It's for us to pause. But listen, do not be a day trader jumping from thing to thing. Do not begin to run. There's no reason for you to go and stockpile a year worth of toilet tissue. <laughs> when all the other names charming, when they fade away, that's going to still be Jesus. Now is the time for us to be focused on God. Now is the time for us to be trusting in his word. Now is the time for us to be the church. This nation is looking for somebody to step up and to stand up and to give some kind of assurance that this thing's not going to take us out. And it's not. Right. It's not going to take us out. And, and the way the Bible explains this, this phenomenon, this, this whole freezing behavior phenomenon, it, it explains it as this thing called the spirit of fear. Look, look, what, look what Paul begins to tell Timothy. He says to Timothy, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. God, hadn't, God is not prompting you to go out and buy a year worth of toilet tissue. God is not giving you a spirit of fear. God is not the thing that's keeping you up at night. God is not giving you any spirit where you have to be worried about how things are going to happen. God is not giving that to you. He said, but what God does give you, he gives you power to get through this situation. This, listen, every individual in here, you've been blessed with power from God. It doesn't matter what's going on in our society. It doesn't matter about this virus. It's, you have power. You, you have this love, this, this love that comes on the inside of you. These are the things that should be shaping your decision. You have the ability to make sound decisions and not allow for fear to make decisions for you. That, that's what Paul begins to say. And what Paul is saying, he's talking to this physical thing that, we're talk, that we talk about, you know, seeing this, this freezing behavior thing. But Paul is actually beginning to explain the psychology behind it. And really, it's a spiritual attack. What Paul is beginning to say is, when you look out and you see the stick... And you believe it is a snake that that whole process is a spiritual process it, it it shows up as a physical process it impacts our mind it impacts our you know what we're thinking about it impacts our our response but the reality of it is it's, it's a spiritual attack and, and this is what the enemy is doing listen with this virus i want you to understand this that there are two viruses that are happening simultaneously that there's a virus called the coronavirus and it is real. You need to follow everything the CDC tells you to follow. You need to do everything you can to make sure that this is most important, especially for people in, in this sanctuary today. It's not about, if you look at this, it's not about us healthy people who are getting around. This is about us taking this to people who can't handle it, taking this to elderly people, taking this to children that cannot handle it. And so it requires for us to be operating in sound judgment. That, that's this real virus that's going on and we can't listen I'm, I'm not going to tell you that, that, that no Christian is going to get covered no Christian is going to be taken down by this that I'm not I'm not even going to tell you that Christians have already died from this there's a real threat, a real virus going on, and we should be cautious of it. But, but what, what Paul begins to tell Timothy, we should not allow our cautiousness. We should not allow the way that we proceed to be dictated by the fear that we have. We should not allow for what we see with our eyes to determine anything except for the fact that we turn to God. Because what he says is when you begin to allow what your eyes see, what you hear on the radio, what you see on the TV, when you allow for your eyes to dictate, Dictate you. That's not that's not God that's dictating you. That's not wisdom that's dictating you. You're not operating in wisdom. Stop trying to make yourself believe that a prudent decision is to buy a year of toilet paper. It is not real. What he says is, in this moment, you need to understand there are two viruses, and the second virus is this fear thing. It's, 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 it's this fear. It's on the inside of us. It wants to come in. Just like the, the coronavirus wants to, it's just looking for a host. It just wants to spread. It just wants to get inside of somebody. It wants to go from you to the next person. Matter of fact, as I was looking at this, this freezing behavior uh, uh, phenomenon, do you know what happens when people see you going through this? When your eyes get wide, when you look scared, you know what happens to them automatically? They get scared. They, they, they start looking around. 
That, that's what this virus wants to do. This virus called fear. It wants to get on the inside of you. It wants to make you make a lot of bad decisions. It wants to do the same thing that the coronavirus does. It wants to shut you up. It wants you sitting somewhere quiet, isolated by yourself. It wants you in doubt. It wants you worried. It wants, it wants to do exactly what the other virus is doing. It wants to shut you. It wants to separate you. It wants to infect as many people as possible. It wants it want as many people as possible to be sitting somewhere in fear, isolated from each other, yeah. worried about tomorrow, worried about how they're going to make it. And what Paul begins to talk to Timothy about, he says, you need to understand that there's this whole nother virus. You don't, don't just focus on, on the coronavirus during this time because it's not the only virus that's being spread. There's a virus of fear that is being spread and it is evident yep. in the purchase of toilet tissue. And this is what Jesus says. I mean, well, first of all, let's look at this because I still believe even as I'm talking to you, that there's some people who do not understand that you're operating in the spirit of fear. So how do you how do you how do you operate in the spirit of fear? How do you see that spirit of fear operating on the inside of you? The, the first thing is I want you to pay attention. Are you overreacting? Are you buying a year's worth of toilet tissue? Are you stocking up things and concern that everything's gonna run up and you've got all this stuff? Your garage is now a bunker, right? You're now you're not one of those guys that are living out of your out of your house and eating all this ration food. <laughs> Are you overreacting? Are you focused on negativity? Are you waking up every morning and looking at how many people die? How many people are infected? What's going on? Where's the stock market? You can't control the stock market. Stop following the stock market. It does not make sense. It's not going to make sense. It was not designed to make sense because from the very beginning, the principle of the stock market doesn't make sense. I'm going to put a little bit in and get a whole lot out. And that don't make sense. It didn't make sense when it was growing and nothing was changing and it got past 20,000 and it got all the way up to almost 30. None of it ever made sense. The difference is fear comes in and you begin to see the stock market like you did in 2008 when it dropped and you begin to say, oh, I, I remember this. And now all of a sudden that stick begins to look like a snake and it begins to take over and it begins to change everything that you're doing and it begins to cut off your generosity and it begins to cut off, it begins to make you think about your job differently and it begins to make you feel like you you're not secure and God is saying I'm with you I'm with you in the water I'm gonna be wet right there with you I'm not gonna let you drown I'm with you in the river I'm not gonna let these I know this foolishness is going on around you I'm not gonna let it knock you down I'm with you in the fire I'm not gonna let it burn you and matter of fact when you come out of coronavirus time you're not gonna even smell like smoke yes. yeah, yeah. Not, not only do you get to this place of negativity, but, but, but are you operating in confusion? Do you feel like you don't know what to do? Do you feel like you don't know who to believe? Like what's going, what's, what's going on? You're constantly trying to figure this thing out. Always in this state of confusion. What about paralysis? Are you stuck? Yes, yeah, it's good. It's good. Are you just sitting there, hours on end, in front of the TV, watching the same new MSNBC, Fox News, just over and over again, the same, different show titles, same news, over and over again, nothing new, same stats, over and over again. Are you paralyzed? Are you isolating yourself right now? And I'm not just talking about physical isolation. Are, are you reaching out to people? Have you, just, have you just gone dark? Are you just sitting around, not reaching out to anybody? Are you doubting? Are you doubting God right now? Are you doubting whether or not our country can handle this? Are you, are you doubting whether, whether or not your job can, can handle this? Are, are you in this place of anger? Are you, are you finding yourself easily angered? Do things tick you off right now? Because if any of these things are going on, more than likely, you're operating in a spirit of fear. And, and this is what Jesus says about it. He says, he says in John 16, he says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Check this out. In this world you will have tribulations. There will be viruses. There will be times when the stock market goes down. There will be issues. There will be wars. There will be things that happen in your life. There will be tribulation. But this is what I need you to do. I need you to be of good cheer. I need you to, to not be fearful. I need you to get to this place where you're not allowing for what you see in your eyes to determine how you're going to react. I need you to be at this place of good cheer. Why? Because I've already overcome the coronavirus. 
I've already overcome every virus that's going to be created in the future. I've overcome the viruses in the past. This isn't the first virus that's came about. This is the first time we've seen a reaction like this, but this isn't the first time, first time a virus has come about. Listen, God is undefeated against every virus that has ever made its way on the face of this earth. Uh, yeah. I, I want you to understand this for a second because you've got these guys who are on a ship with Jesus. They're not on the ship with somebody who knew Jesus. They're on the ship with Jesus. Jesus has been teaching to them all day long. All day long, right there. I mean, he's just talking to them all day long. He's talking to them about faith over and over again. He does these four parables, and he's just talking to them about faith, the importance of faith, the importance of trusting God, the importance of believing that God will take care of you regardless of any situation. And at the end of that day, they get on this boat, and they're going out, and, and, and then all of a sudden, this storm comes, same day. And, and you know what they started doing? Buying toilet tissue. They, they start to yell and they start to scream and they start to getting upset. They start to worry. They start to getting concerned. And Jesus gets to this place where he wakes up and he comes to them and he says, I don't understand it. Listen, haven't I been faithful to you? Haven't I taken care of you? Didn't I get you through the last recession? Didn't I take care of you? Did you lose your, you know, did, did, we're not there with you. Did, did your family stay together? What not there for you? Did not stand with you? What not there through every situation of your life? What not in the time of trouble? What not close to you just like I promised? Even when the earthquake came, even when the winds came, even when the storm came, what not there with you in the last storm? What not there with your mom? Didn't you see me growing up there for, for you, for your family, taking care of your mom, taking care of your grandma? Haven't I always been there for you? Why all of a sudden? even on the same day that I'm teaching you about faith are you doubting yes. are you overreacting why, why aren't you looking at the water coming onto the ship and believing and taking something taking a, a pail and throwing the water out why aren't you doing things to get through the storm I've given you the wisdom that you need I've given you the power that you need I'll give you actually in that instance any of those people could have spoke to the wind and the waves there was all types of power there was all types of love there was all types of sound judgment but instead of them focusing on what God had given them they focused on the spirit of fear and they ran in and they, they're yelling help us please can't you see what's going on can't you see and what Jesus says no can you see yeah. right. 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 Can you see that this is not the time to stock up on toilet paper, but that this is the time for you to operate in power. This is the time for you to operate in love. This is the time for you to operate in sound judgment, in the wisdom of God, that God is not, listen, listen, God, God is not going to leave us. God is not going to forsake us. God's been with us. He's, he's talked with us a year on grace. God is not about to uh, withdraw grace from us right now. God has been talking with us about vision, about seeing things with 2020 vision God's been speaking to us he's been speaking to us and now we think all of a sudden after everything God has said to us after everything that God has done for us the way he took care of us after all the stuff that God has done now we're at a place where we're going to begin to doubt him good. that we're going to overreact so good. that we're going to begin to put our faith and our trust in something other than God that we're going to begin to make decisions based on what we saw with our eyes we're, we're not going to just take a pause, but we're going to go ahead on it and imagine. And that's what happens in this situation. We're going to imagine the worst. We're going to imagine that the worst thing possible is going to happen. And what, what Jesus begins to tell us, he says, listen, there's going to be some times when things don't work out. There are going to be some times when a virus comes about. There are going to be some times when war comes about. But this is what I need for you to do. I need for you to understand that there's an opportunity, even in that situation, for you to have peace. That You can have peace. In the midst of all what's going on, while everybody's going and stocking up on toilet paper, there is an opportunity for you to be sitting at home with peace. With all the stuff that you have going on, that there's an opportunity for you to react in a way that's not fearful. So, so, so how do we do it? Paul, Paul, Paul begins to, to talk to the Philippian church and he gives some things. And, and these are the things that I'm going, as your pastor, these are the things that I am going to be expecting for us to go out and do. These are the things that I am going to be expecting for us to, to, to stand up strong in right now. And what Paul does is he begins to speak to the Philippian church. And in verse 4, he says, this is what he tells the Philippian church, who was going through their own little, little, little chaos at the time. 
he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say it, rejoice. This is what he says. In the midst of what you have going on, whether you're on the ship, in the storm, whether you're going through the coronavirus, whether something is going on in your marriage, whether something's going on down at the job, whether you're lonely, it doesn't matter what's going on, whether you are in the place where you want to be or not in the place where you want to be, regardless of the situation that you find, whether you have the virus or don't have the virus, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You have to get to a place of joy. You have to figure out, regardless of what everybody else is doing, why everybody else is buying toilet paper, right. you have to focus on joy. Yeah. You have to focus on seeing the good side of it. Do you realize that if you flip the statistics upside down, that this is a virus that's not killing most of the people that get it, that this is a virus that's not impacting the mass majority of the people in the United States, in the world, even in the countries where it's been, it's impacted a lot of people. And I'm not trying to say anything to downplay the seriousness of this uh, this disease but do you realize that the statistics if flipped in the other direction are some of the more positive statistics that we can see I'm not saying that we need to do anything silly I'm not telling you to walk around like your mind doesn't work and, and like you just in la la land about this but what I'm saying is during this time you need to be seeing things from a positive perspective because there's too much information out there and if you get up every day and look at the negative stats and not convert them to positive stats you're going to hurt yourself yeah, yeah. Paul tells his church is going through this struggle and I'm telling you today it's going to be it is very important that we stay positive that we begin to look for those little nuggets the opportunity to still gather is a way to stay positive the fact that today I woke up I don't have the virus uh, nobody I haven't lost anybody today we've got to focus on the positive instead of the negative yeah. He goes a little bit further. He says, let, let your gentleness, this word literally means graciousness, the way you treat people. You know, sometimes when, when we have this, 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 this behavior going on, this, when we're seeing things and we get scared, well, you know what we stop doing? We stop being nice to people. Right. I can imagine that in some of these grocery stores when the last little bit of toilet tissue was there that some Christians probably didn't act like Christians in that instance about who's going to walk out of there with that last little piece of toilet tissue. I can imagine I can imagine that graciousness, that kindness, that gentleness went I, I've got to have a year worth of this stuff man. You better give it to me. I don't care anything about you, about your family about your situation. Oh you don't have any at home? Who cares? I I need a year worth. <laughs> he says, let, let your gentleness be known to all men because God is here. God is at hand. God's not going to leave us. God's not going to forsake us. There's no reason for us to get angry. To get this in, in all national tragedies, there's this element of fear that comes in. People all Hitler, we can go back all throughout Mussolini, all through back history. And there's this element of fear that allow people to go out and do something that they know that they would have normally done. This fear gets involved and this fear leads to all types of bad behavior and negative things. And, and what, what we have to do as Christians, we have to get to this place where even during this coronavirus, we stay gracious. Yeah. Paul goes a little bit further. He says, be anxious. Don't worry. This, this word for anxious means literally don't marinate on it. Don't get up every day and check the numbers and see how many people die, whether or not it's in Mecklenburg County. And how many cases are in Mecklenburg County? Well, how many cases are in North Carolina? How many cases are in the region? Well, I don't know what's going on. What, are we going to go to work? He says, don't marinate on this stuff. Yeah. Turn CNN off. Turn off all these all day, 24 hours. They're talking about the same thing all day long. Be informed. I'm not telling you not to be informed. Be informed. But don't watch this all day long. Right. Don't spend your entire day marinating on this stuff. Thinking about this stuff. Talking about this stuff. Stop. Limit the conversations that you have with people. I, I want you to pay attention to the conversations that you're having now. Are your conversations focused on coronavirus? Is this the only thing we got? God is still moving. God is still doing amazing stuff. God is still protecting us. God is still with us. Matter of fact, the Bible says at this particular time, God is closer to us now than ever before. Why are we not talking about a God that's close to us right now? Why are we not talking about God's promises? Why are we not talking about the fact that we still have toilet paper? That we don't have to go out and do all this extra stuff and, and talk about all these negative things, but God is taking care of us. God is providing for us and he's going to be with us he says don't be anxious for what nothing I looked this word up it literally means nothing 
I, I went into the Greek and, and I want to look at it closely. And, and it literally, toilet paper, don't worry about it. Don't, don't be anxious for nothing is what he's saying. Don't go out and try and stockpile nothing. He, he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, this is what I want you to do. I want you to let your request be made known to God. And he says, if you do this, if you can get to this place where you can stay prayerful and thankful, if you can get to this place where you're not worrying about everything and all day long marinating on, on what's going on, this is what God promised. It's the same thing that Jesus promised. He's saying that the peace which surpasses all understanding. People won't understand how in the midst of corona you remain peaceful. Like, like it's understandable that people would be running around crazy and buying toilet tissue and stockpiling all kind of stuff. But in the midst of the coronavirus, you'll be able to look back and say, a peace which surpassed all understanding was with me. He says that this peace that surpasses all understanding, it'll guard my mind, it'll guard my heart. I'll be able to get through this situation. It won't matter what's going on in the rest of the world. I'm not dependent on the world. Matter of fact, I'm not conformed to this world. I'm not, I'm not dependent on this world. I'm trans formed by the renewing of my mind yes. That's good. and even in this time you've got to allow for that renewing to take place you've got to allow now is the time to turn to prayer I'm not sure what your prayer life is like right. Right, right. I'm not sure how often you pray but now will be a good time to pray good. I'm not sure how grateful you are I want you to understand that if the worst is going to come you better be grateful right now for everything that God has done for you. Now, now is not the time for you to be anxious. Now, now is not the time for you to be worried. Now is the time for you to be in prayer. Now is the time for you to be talking to God. Look at all the different ways he tells us to talk to God. He says, I want you to pray. I want you to come with me with supplication. He says, I want you to come to me with thanksgiving. Now is the time for you to be before the altar. Now is the time for you to be on your knees. Now is the time for you to be having conversations with God about how good, acknowledging God for everything that he's done. Now is the time for you to be prayerful yeah. Yeah. and thankful. Yeah. He, he says, verse 8, he says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, true, that's what I need you to focus on. That, that's the hard part about this because you don't know what's true. You're getting one message from the administration, one message from the CDC in the same interview. I'm talking about in the same interview. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not political at all. I don't care anything about red or blue. I don't get, I don't get involved in it at all. But, but in the same interview, you've got the administration that's saying one thing, steps back, another person steps up and says the exact opposite thing. You have one person says, there's nothing at all to worry about. There's a hoax. It doesn't matter what's going on. I don't listen to any of it. Don't, don't believe any of it. Step back. You better not listen to that. <laughs> this is a pandemic. You better, hey, you better pay attention to it. Listen, you got to get to this place where you focus on what is true. How are you going to know what is true? You got to turn to God. You got to ask God. This is what James says. He says, when you want wisdom, this is what you're supposed to do. When you want wisdom, you need to ask God. You need to come to God and you need to ask him for wisdom. And this is the promise. And I will, this is what God says. I will give you all the wisdom that you need. The only thing that I want you to do is not doubt what I give you. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there, are, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stay focused on it. I want you to keep your eyes on these things, the things that are true, the things that are noble, the things that are trust, that, that are just, the things that are pure, the things that are loyal. I need you, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get to this place where you focus on the good side, the good report of what's going on. I need you to get to the place where you begin to see inside of every news story the good thing that God is doing, the opportunity for God to show up, understanding that God is going to fix this thing. He says, what I need you to do is I need you to keep your eyes on, on these things that are, that are godly. He, he goes a little bit further. He says, if there is any virtue, 
And if there's anything praiseworthy, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. If there's any virtue, if there's anything inside the story that's praiseworthy, I need you to meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and this is the promise, that same peace that surpasses all understanding. He says that the God that sends that peace that surpasses all understanding, he says that that God, he'll be with you. What he promises, this is what Paul promised, is the exact same thing that Jesus promised. It is the exact same thing that the Bible promises. You know what the, 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 the term that's used the most in the Bible? Don't fear. You know how many times it's used in the Bible? 365 times. One time for every day. God is telling you every day that you wake up, don't fear. God is telling you every day that you get up, I don't want you to fear. What Jesus says, oh, you know what term Jesus used more than any other term throughout his writing? Don't fear. Don't be afraid. That's where we've got to get to this place where we're not fearful. But instead of being fearful, we've got to get to this place where we're positive, where we're able to go out and listen and give a message of positivity, where we're able to treat people right now while people are being treated all kind of terrible ways. And it, it's, it may only get worse by the way how we treat each other, but, but there ought to be a group of people who can treat people with grace. Yeah. Yes. There ought to be a group of people who are not running around like chickens with their head cut off, buying up all the toilet paper. There ought to be a group of people who are not worried about everything that they hear on the newspaper and not thinking about the last disease and going out and making a lot of bad decisions, but they are turning toward God for wisdom. They are turning toward God for direction. There ought to be some people in this room. Yeah. Mm -hmm who regardless of the situation that's going on ought to be able to be people of peace regardless of what's happening, regardless of what you see, regardless of what's happening inside of our lives, inside of our economy, regardless of what's happening at your job, you ought to be able to stand resolute with the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. And this is the promise that regardless of what's going on, Jesus says there will be tribulation. This is what I promise you. In the midst of tribulation, you can have peace. What Jesus says to the people on the boat, there is a storm going on. But in the midst of the storm, you can have peace. And what the Bible says to us today, if we don't allow fear to dictate us, to make us go out and do silly stuff, you know what's second on the list for running out? Mask. CDC has been saying for a month now that those masks will not do anything for you. They won't, they don't work at all. But, 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 but your mind, you saw in the past, some, at some point in the past, you saw, oh yeah, the mask, I'm, I'm, I see this fearful thing and now I'm gonna go and grab this thing that I used to do and I'm gonna put it on. Here's the reality of it. No good decision comes out of fear. And what God is looking for, for each one of you, for me included, is for us to be people who are without fear, people who stay positive, people who trust in Him, people who are gracious, people who are prayerful right now. People need prayer, man. Pray with as many people as you can. When you're on the telephone with somebody, before you get off the telephone with them, tell them how thankful you are for them and pray with them. Yeah. When you talk to somebody and they're fearful and they're worried about all this stuff, tell them how thankful you are and pray for them. Stay, stay focused. Keep people focused. Just keep yourself focused. But keep your eyes and keep other people's eyes around you focused on the things that are of God, the things that, that God can do instead of what, what we're saying. And, and this is the promise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, is going to get you through the coronavirus and any other virus. It'll get you through this stock market and any other market. It'll take care of you. It'll get you through all this foolishness. And the God of peace, this is the promise, the God of peace will be with you. I, I want you to think about this for a second. Imagine your current situation, this current week. How would it be different? If instead of focusing on the fear, we focus on the positivity. Look, you can't change it. But, but why, are you, why are you giving yourself an ulcer thinking about it? 
You, that's nothing you can do. You're not a scientist. God, when, when the cure comes, God will give the cure when it's time for the cure. But, but during the process, man, well, how much different would it be if you could focus on the positive side of it instead of focus? Stop doing this to yourself. You're not meant. Listen, the fear mechanism that's on the inside of you is meant to be used just a few times throughout your life period. It's not meant to be used every day. Your heart cannot handle it. That's why he says it guards your heart and your mind. Your heart can't handle the, the constant beating. That's why you're having panic attacks. That's why you're losing control. That's why you feel like you're about to faint all the time because your heart, your body was not built to handle panic, daily panic attacks. Some of us are having daily panic attacks. You, you don't even, you, you're trying to deny it. You, you don't think it's fear, but you're under fear all day long. Your mind cannot handle, you, you're going to lose your mind. I want you to imagine your life. If you could stay positive throughout the coronavirus. I want you to just imagine right now. Just, just don't have to look forward. Look backwards. How would it change your week if you were just a little bit kinder? If you prayed a little bit more? If you were just a little bit more thankful? If you focused on things that were good, things that were pure, things that were a virtue? If you, if you live like what we saw in Paul and all those other people in the Bible, none of them would have ran, made a run on toilet paper. Uh, because what God wanted me to tell you he, he's going to quiet the storm what, what, what he wants you to do is to be faithful during the storm what he wants you to do is to be focused during the storm what he wants you to do is to keep your eyes on him know that he put you on the boat and he is on the boat with you know that regardless of what it looks like in this society that God has you God has you and he's going to protect you and he's going to get you through this storm and there are going to be many more storms that are going to come in the future and for every storm that you go through God is never going to forget you so, so this week, I, I want you to do this. It's real simple. I, 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 want, I want you to replace the fear in your life with the power, love, and wisdom. It, it only comes from Christ. I, I want you to focus on being positive. I want you to focus on those things that are lovely. I want you to focus on, stop focusing on the negative. Stop doing what everybody else is doing. Just because people are buying toilet paper doesn't mean buying toilet paper is the right thing to do. You've got to get to this place of wisdom. You've got to get to this place of power. And you've got to get to this place of love. Do you, do you receive that today? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you now. In the name of your son, Yeshua the Christ. And he promises us that he would give us peace regardless of the situation, God. We look at the story in Mark 4, and he brings peace into the situation. And he tells us in the situation that we're not supposed to be people of fear. But God, if we're honest with you today, there are things going on around us that are out of our control. Things that we have never seen. This is a time that we've never, church is being closed. Church is not allowed to assemble. This is a time that we've never seen before. And God, it's quite naturally easy for us to begin to fear. But you say in your word, God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear. So God, what we need from you now is to begin to show us. Let us see it with our own eyes. The power that you've given us. God, give us power during this time. Let, let us be able to see the love that you've given us. God, allow us to reach out in love and to take care of people in love, God. And, and to give us wisdom like never before, God. We need you to show us where to go, where not to go, God. We want you to order our steps, God. We want to be in your, in your grace right now, God. And so I'm praying over uh, this nation right now, over this world right now, that the spirit of the Lord, the mighty God, would, would stamp out the spirit of fear right now, God. We're praying for victory over fear right now, God. We're praying for victory over the coronavirus, but we're praying for victory over the virus of fear as well, God. We're praying that you give us the opportunity, God. Give us the power. Give us the love. Give us the sound judgment to be positive, to be gracious, to not worry, but to be prayerful and to be thankful, God, and to keep our eyes focused on you. And we're believing right now that the spirit of peace, God, which surpasses all understanding, that the God of peace will be with us, that the spirit of peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts 
and our minds in Christ Jesus and we celebrate the victory over Corona we celebrate the victory over every virus that has ever come and we celebrate the victory over every virus that's ever gonna come and we declare victory over coronavirus right now in the name of your son Yeshua the Christ amen, amen. amen. amen.